Hey guys, Ben Ostervelt here with the Business From Within podcast. Hey guys, Ben here. Uh, this is about to dive into my workday and just really started thinking and taking some time to just, you know, meditate and think. And, and uh, I just think about the fear of success and I feel like so many real estate agents and business people are looking for the newest strategy, the cutting edge marketing, the online, the best web leads, and they're focusing all on gaining new business and, and systems to bring in new leads, how to take care of your clients. And you know, that's really important things. But the problem is if you Google that, they're, they're everywhere. All, this, all the answers are there from a business logical business systems perspective. The thing is though, the fear of success doesn't care about that kind of stuff. The fear of success is being scared to stand alone to be scared to do the thing that other people aren't doing because you're going to be ridiculed. The fear of success is making a million bucks and having your own family turn on you because they can't handle that you make money and they don't. Or your friends start judging you because you're loaded and you're having a huge success. Maybe you drive a nice car. And people start judging you, and I think that's why people gain momentum in business, start making a ton of money, and start doing really smart things, and then they start effing it up. And I think it's a pattern that I think needs to be talked about. I've done it myself. It's very scary when someone judges you, especially in front of people. And when you put your head above the crowd, all of a sudden it can get knocked off. And there is a lot of there are a lot of people that don't want to do that. But that's the thing. We're not taught as kids to stand alone. We're taught to to get in line, to behave, to follow the system. Follow the crowd. Even in school, you're graded. Uh, you're, you're graded, and you got to keep up with everybody else. And then they tell you you're special. Oh, you're so special. But be quiet. You're so special. Don't make a scene. I think it's a mixed, mixed message. I don't think anyone means to do that. But then we grow up in our life. All of a sudden, we start standing out, and we just have this instinct. We've got to get back in the crowd. We've got to get back in line. I think that's crazy. The thing is, the thing is if you think about fear of success, I think that's, it's, it's more of a conversation that needs to happen in business and with real estate agents than, than even new marketing strategies. Marketing is so easy. Getting new clients is so easy. I can show that all day long. The thing is, who can keep their money? Who can keep the momentum of success without going and buying three boats just to get yourself into financial trouble? Or, or go buy some online website for freaking $18,000 and three grand a month. Like, why are you doing that? I think that's because you get to the place in your life where you're going, you know what? I'm too successful. I have to subconsciously sabotage myself. And then you're like, I got to restart again. Why do you think I help relaunch real estate agents? Because I think this fear of success is not talked about. I think we need to bring some awareness around it. I know I've done it myself. I, 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 you know, it, maybe you want to change a brokerage. I know I changed brokerage. I did it for other reasons. But the thing is, it can really affect your financial picture. It can really affect your mental space. And it's a great way to sabotage yourself. How about, how about moving to another location? Hey, I got to move. I got to move. Oh, I'm going to buy a new car. I'm going to switch this. I'm going to switch offices. I'm going to – all these different things. Right when you can become stabilized and successful, you start changing things. Maybe that's what it is. Anyways, I just wanted to bring some awareness that maybe we need to be talking about the fear of success, not just new marketing strategies. It has to come one and two. It's a one-two punch. If you're not doing that, I think you're just going to create a cycle, and it's just going to be you know, like, oh, i got to get going again. Here's the feast and famine again. Maybe it's not about your systems. It's Maybe it's about the belief system around how scared you are to be successful. Just at this really funky Airbnb here in Toronto. Going to spend a couple of days coaching uh, an agent here. Super excited about it. Um, but I just wanted to say something. I got referred online uh, a few times to a guy on Facebook as a realtor, pretty successful one, saying, hey, I'm looking for a coach. I'm, I want to get to the next level. And I had a lot of people, you know, say, you got to use Ben. He's a good coach. Uh, he'll, he'll. But the thing is, he, he will go into your personal life. It's not just about strategies. And that is true. That's the thing. And the reason I want to make this video is because so many people want to get to this supposedly next level. Why not just say, here's the life I want to build, and this is the cost it's going to cost me. That's what number I'm shooting for. It's a completely different question. Most people just want to get to 800 to a million. Like a million is like this ego echelon that says hey i've like it's the arrival place of the top realtors and people just look up to you i'm just thinking what's the difference between eight hundred thousand and a million 
Now, the people I work with, it's like, that's the question I want to ask. The question is, what life do you want to build and what's it cost? What's important to you? A lot of times they don't know what they want. This is the biggest problem with a lot of the coaching clients I deal with is they don't know what they want. So they just build, 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 and then they buy investment properties. They buy a new car. And the thing is, like, they never really get into the inside of like, what do they want? Yep. The reason why you can't figure out what you want is because you most likely, most people are living a life that's not theirs believing belief systems that they were handed to. Look, if you were born in Canada, you're probably a somewhat of a Christian based, you know, born in, uh, you know, Iraq or, or Syria, you're probably Muslim based. The question is, what are your beliefs? Are they yours? Now we can find out once you figure out what you really believe, then you can figure out what you really want. Then we can start building a life that actually serves you. They actually super fulfilled. And you know what? It may only cost 350,000 may only cost 80 grand. And you're busy trying to get to the next level. Change the question. What life do you want? And is it your life? Is it the life that you've been told to have? Or is it a life that is really, truly yours? I was just thinking about energy and our mental energy and how much does that play into our, our ability to be successful and engaging in relationships. How many things on your head take up mental energy? I feel like this is the back door to success. So many people are looking for the next greatest marketing strategy, looking at how to be successful, maybe how to be organized and all these things. But how many people are thinking about the mental drain that's constantly leaking out of our life? What about having a conversation with someone that like your mom or dad or, or partner that maybe you should have been having? It's in your head, but you're not willing to have an honest conversation. But if you realize that when you wake up in the morning and you're totally groggy and you're not motivated, maybe it's because you've got all these different things on your mind and on your head that are draining you, which will directly affect your income, directly affect your fulfillment in relationships. It'll, it'll, it'll kill your creativity. It's time for a clean sweep if this is who you are. Take a look at maybe you haven't, you've got this closet that's just filthy and you and filled with junk and you're thinking, oh, I gotta get that done. That I gotta get that done sits there and weighs in our minds. You know what, what happens? Just go get it done, create some space, create some new creative space in your mind and see what comes. When you meet it with a client, they're gonna feel the energy that you have that all the to do's and all the worries on your mind, the things that you should have got done in that meeting, they're not gonna understand why you don't have the energy but it's because you've got a constant leak in your boat. Is there a conversation that needs to be had? Is there an honest conversation that needs to be had? Is there something in your office that's always been dirty, it's time to clean it up? Is your trunk dirty? I know my trunk needs to be cleaned up and I know that sits on my head. That's exactly what I'm talking about. It's just a, a subtle drain. But when you got 30 of these things on your mind, it's time for a clean sweep. Take a look at it, guys. Take a look at all the things that are not getting done. Change your schedule. Schedule it and say, every day I'm gonna get one thing done. How about once a week, once a month? I don't care, but just make a note to say, I'm gonna clean out some space to create more mental energy, to become more attractive as a human being, to lift my energy so I don't feel groggy in the morning, and then you will unlock creativity. Take a look at this. It's absolutely incredible here, just with our team at Sunshine and and uh, I was telling the boys here about my little daughter and I wanted to just put a little video together, maybe inspire some people. Um, my little daughter the other day, I was putting her to bed, she's five and she's the most beautiful, cute thing you've ever seen. And she goes, dad, I don't like my smile, it's ugly. And I'm just like, where does that come from? This little beautiful thing is now she's starting to hide her smile when they take pictures. So I'm thinking, wow, so where does that come from? It can't be that we're teaching them this, but uh, I think about it and I think, well, every single woman has makeup on. Every time we leave the house, we have to look, you know, perfect. And I think, I think the subconscious, when they see mommy putting their makeup on all the time, maybe when you take a picture, you oh, don't take a picture of me. Like, I think it's all this subtleties. So why not, why not instead of teach your kids confidence, show them confidence? Why not go up and, and, and just maybe don't wear makeup one day and challenge yourself? <laughs> there he is. It's Adam. Dude, I'm doing a really inspirational video here. <laughs> Anyways, thinking about challenge yourself, man. It's just like if you got a stain on your shirt or if you got something that might make you not look so perfect, maybe show your kids that it's okay. 
Maybe to push yourself. Like, what would you tell your child? You tell your child, don't worry about it. Just smile. Who cares what people think? Well, maybe turn the camera back on you and maybe do that today, tomorrow. Push yourself to maybe get more comfortable with being a little bit ugly, a little bit non-perfect, and maybe the kids would learn from you. Don't tell your kids what to do. Show them. Hey, I just wanted to share a story. I'm, I'm getting prepared to uh, do some coaching today with some real estate agents, and something's really hit me. Um, my son probably nine years old he's always been a little bit behind in his reading uh, I think he's just rather be playing sports or doing whatever playing with his buddies and but um, it's never been a real thing for him <clears throat> so he's always been behind in his reading and it was crazy we had parent-teacher interviews you know a couple weeks ago and we went and met with his the, the specialty teacher who works with kids that are behind in reading and he's and she says what the heck happened in January he went up like five levels, and she goes, that just doesn't happen. So he, he improved his reading by five levels, and and she just really couldn't believe there was been a transformation. And she was, she was really interested, what the heck happened? And we thought about it, Renee and I were thinking about it, we were like, holy crap, the only thing that's really changed is we put him into hockey. Now, now really started thinking about this, especially as a coach and, and as, a, as a business owner, and just started thinking about it's amazing how, imagine if the reading coach says, hey, find something he's passionate about and do it. And his reading will get better. We'd be like, well, that's kind of weird. You can't, one plus one's not making two, but it, it logically, it doesn't make sense. But I'm thinking, well, how does that relate to our lives? So are we doing things, like, I feel like we have something in our soul that dies and just sit there, dies, goes quiet uh, because we're too busy or we think we need to make money. We need to work harder at what we're doing. What if we just found something to include in our lives that is absolutely passionate? Like, what if you like hiking? What if you, what if you like playing hockey? What if, what are the things that you are not allowing yourself to do because you think you're trying to move forward? When the very thing that you're not allowing yourself to do that turns you on actually might be able to push you forward or inspire you to go farther without logical sense. So it's just absolutely amazing to start thinking about what if we did something we loved every week? What if we in, what if we just made that happen? And that actually was what drove your success in your business, in your finances, maybe in your marriage, in your maybe your better dad or whatever, or or better a better mom. The, the the thing is, I just think what a cool analogy where Rock went and started playing hockey, and he has fallen in love with this. He just he wants to change his name to Connor, Connor McDavid. Like he's just absolutely found his thing, and it's pretty cool. So, anyways, it, I get I guarantee you, everyone has their thing. Guarantee you, I think that we need to start kind of sowing that into the garden in a way. Just let it let it grow. Just kind of go into to doing some things that you're passionate about. Make sure that's included in your life. If you're really focused on building your business or focused on getting ahead, well, that is actually part of the recipe. Anyways, cheers. I wanted to share that today. Anyways, have a good one. See ya.